Okay, Thursday morning in the kingdom. We're on location. We're over here to see the Canada flag, the USA flag, and the flag of Maine. The flag of Maine's a little tangled up, but that's okay. But that's not where the Kennedy family of the politics of the 60s lives. It's the Bush family. That's how I remember, remember it. Plus, how the... Oh, no talent today. Plus, how do you spell Kenny Bunport or whatever? Proper saying on that. I'm learning. All right, so this morning we woke up to plus 12 but feels like plus 11. This morning at 3.22 a.m. when I got up for a pee, it was plus 7 Celsius. Yes, frost on the pumpkins almost. All right, so on the yo-yo scale, plus 54, but feels like plus 53. Also, two on location here. Look at that. The tire's flat on the bottom. On freaking real, you know, all of a sudden it went flat. I don't know why. Now I'm gonna look like my dad running around with the air tank, putting air in all these tires. On freaking real, but that's okay. All right, let's go back to scrolling the proper way. Yesterday was a great success doing loose ends, plus the comments and, and information shared on the video is excellent. Everybody's learning, including me. Because I have to learn how to work on those carburetors. I have to learn the timing setting. I have to learn that anything brand new nowadays is junk in the new world. So you just can't accept it if you take it off the part shelf and go to toss it on. And it's because it's brand new means it's going to work. No. Take something proven that's 50 years old or whatever and put it on. Then try the new stuff to see what's happening. We'll have to get a fuel pressure regulator for the fuel pump because the fuel pump is putting out way too much pressure or not enough pressure or whatever. You have to put a regular regulator in it to make it happy. And yet those fuel fuel pumps have been pumping for 60, 70 years with that technology, but in the new world, the new replacement pumps are junk. Unreal. All right. So the bush line looks pretty good. We got to get back to cutting firewood because it's August and it's feeling chilly. So now we think winter's coming. Yeah, it is. It's not very far away. All right. The bush line looks good. We did that back in May. No, June. Oh, that sun's bright. Yes, and Sir Rodney's sending up a transmission for the 41 Chevy to give us bow low so it'll drive around because it's too high of gears and too tall of tires, so it's a little hard on that automatic transmission. Yes, uh, we purchased that transmission back in the spring. Yes, but we never got around to shipping it. All right, so we did the full rotation. Today we got loose ends to do. We have to get stuff ready to downsize. We're shipping Sir Rodney a bunch of goodies. Yes, so he can liquidate, sell it, and he can have some beer money and I can pay some bills. Yeah, minor detail. All right, we better go. Here comes the boss. Thursday morning in Whoville. It's just after 9 a.m. and I let the dogs out. Now it's time to make breakfast around 10 a.m. I have to go over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. Pretty sure we're doing a few things. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 14 degrees Celsius, which is 57 degrees Fahrenheit. We even had the feels like on the bottom. Now it's time to head inside and get ready. Almost 10 a.m. and I'm just getting ready to head over to the kingdom. As you can see, it is pretty nice out here this morning. Not many clouds in the sky. And I have my dad's supper and bread there. So let's head on over and see what he's up to this morning. Just after 10 a.m. and I made to the kingdom. Now I'll head on down to the shop and see what my dad's up to. I'm not sure what we're doing this morning. So let's go find out. Down at the shop now and it looks like my dad has to measure underneath for the transmission. Sir Rodney told us that is rare yoke so we are going to measure it to see exactly what size we need that way Sir Rodney can look for it. As you can see we have it covered with a bag that way no debris and stuff gets in there. Someone taped it on pretty good. He wasn't able to read the serial number on it, so he said he'll have to pull it off. That way he can look at it so Sir Rodney can find us the proper parts for this. Didn't take my dad very long and he was able to get the seal out. As you can see, he kind of damaged it, but luckily he didn't get the serial numbers. I'm not sure if you can see it up on the very top there, but hopefully he's able to make it out and Sir Rodney can get us some parts for it.
just finished putting air in the long trailer. Now my dad's going to head around the house so he can air up the 69. It has a low tire as well, so I'll take the hose up and go meet him over there since he has to go all the way around the back of the house. Up at the house now, and as you can see, the 69 has a pretty flat back tire. I'm not sure why. Maybe the bead isn't on properly or something, or there could be a hole in the tire since it is pretty old. But good thing we have the loader, so we just came up the top of the air. Back up at the shop now, and it looks like we are going to move a few things around the kingdom, which is boring, so I won't record much of that, but I better get over and help my dad. Just after 12 p.m., we finished moving stuff around the kingdom. As you can see, it is getting pretty cloudy out here. Hopefully, it'll start to rain because those sand flies were pretty bad. Now it's time to head inside and grab my dog treats, then I'll go back into Whoville and make lunch. I do have to come back here at 1 p.m. and help my dad. 12.30 and I just made home from the kingdom. Now I'll head inside and let the dogs out. He gave me a load of laundry to do, so I'll quickly do that before I head back to the kingdom at 1.30. So let's head inside. I think I'm going to have craft dinner for lunch. Hopefully, it doesn't turn mushy. 1.30 and I just finished up lunch. My craft dinner actually turned out pretty good today. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 19 degrees Celsius, which is 66 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. As you can see, it's getting pretty windy out there and some clouds are rolling in. Maybe we'll get some rain. Now it's time to head over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. Just after 1.30 and I made it back to the kingdom. Looks like the wind is picking up, so hopefully no more sand flies. I don't have to wear my bug net, but now I'll head on down to the shop and see what my dad's up to. Almost 3 p.m. coffee time and I'm gonna head into Whoville and do the mail then pick up my dad's laundry then I'll come back to the kingdom for a bit and tinker around with my dad. As you can see it's pretty windy here today. The sand flies are on and off so I do have my bug net handy. Just after 3 p.m. and I made it back to the kingdom there was no bills in the mail so that's pretty good. Now it's time to head on down to the shop and see what my dad's up to. At 6 p.m. we just finished taking the motor out of our old bread truck that we had laying around. We were going to put it in the 45 but decided not to so I think we're going to ship it down to Sir Rodney in Winnipeg and hopefully he can sell it for us. We taped up everything as well. Once my dad lowers it down I can tape up that too but looks pretty good. Still in decent shape as well. Lots of new stuff on it. 6.30 and I'm officially done in the kingdom. We put a tarp around the motor just in case it rains. We don't want the electrical and stuff to get damaged. Now I can head inside and finish up and then I'll go back to Whoville and quickly do the weather. Almost 7 p.m. and I just made it back from the kingdom and put the quad away. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 19 degrees Celsius, which is 66 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. It's been pretty nice out there today, other than the sand flies, which did give up halfway through the day, but now they're starting to get bad again. My dad messaged me and told me we lost a bunch of videos, so that's not good. You guys didn't get to see the motor coming out of the bread truck, but that's okay. At least you guys got to see the motor afterwards. Now let's head inside, let the dogs out, make supper, and end my day. Okay, 6.30 in the kingdom, and we worked hard today using the green toy to get this 6.7 Cummings motor out of the bread truck, because that was going to be my hot rod. Yes, but we have a problem. I let the staff do all the recording today when the me phones talked to each other and transferred it to, from her me phone to my me phone, and then I went to put it in the computer. Guess what? We're missing film footage. All right, so I'm going to stand out here and chat. Okay, there's a fellow in... Cape Cod, yes, United States of America, Cape Cod, and he suggested we should do a recap on everything, because, you know, the new new subscribers, Kingdom followers, need to touch base, so, okay, now we're going to walk around, and we'll do a quick recap to get the full 20 minutes, because everybody needs a good nap. Okay, here's the Screaming Ford that gave me 15 seconds of fame on Ice Road Truckers. Yes, I was on TV, and it's still being replayed 11 years after the fact. I was actually in the show in 2013, and then again in 2014. 
2014 is fame for how'd you say missing the corner at ricochet hill but we are running the tire chains all the time so we we're able to get out all right so this is the screaming ford the 8v71 that gave me the sounds the music on tv so everybody watches the show has a great time but also too back then when they filmed my beard wasn't gray now it's gray so in 2020 just before the great lockdowns we're up on the winter road towing off a broken v8 max so there's two v8 trucks up on the winter road and i was towing the v8 mac that broke down and we blew up the front differential yes we flew blew, broke it so we had to go with thor the plow truck to bring it off the winter road so that johnny g helped me and he had fun he drove the thor the plow truck because it's an automatic and i drove the screaming ford just revving the motor up for air and steering and we towed out that v8 mac yes so here we did we welded the rear end together and so we can drive it around the yard and here it is proof there's no dry shaft in there can you see that last netsman yes no dry shaft so we welded it up and we got the tire chains on to move trailers around the yard okay i checked the videos and maybe i should explain how the screaming ford becomes a tow truck it's easy we put this weight box on this box was at the mine and we modified it to fit the screaming ford we used to do how would you say if we bobtailed anywhere pulling a small trailer yes you need something to cover the wheels so the rocks didn't come up and you know fling forward so you drive into them so under here is the fifth wheel pin i don't know if we can see that less nestman it's kind of dark bad day for shadows but this thing is half inch thick it's heavy duty We've always used it as a weight box on the Screaming Ford. And then I think about 2013 or 14, we put the pulley on a stick on it. Yes, pulley on a stick. So then we used the 40, the 30,000 pound wicked winch on the Screaming Ford. We put the, how would you say, the cable over the top and we become a tow truck. There's a Whipple tree or wherever the A-frame for lifting. So that works out good. You cross chain it to the back of the truck and it doesn't come off, it doesn't move. And then you put your welder and all your other materials inside because it is a box. But we did scrap metal for numerous years. So this is where we get all the materials. Yes, we save everything because we recycle, repurpose and use it one more time. I don't know if we can see it here, Les Nessman. I'll hold the camera up. See the box is empty, but it's half inch thick and then they tapered on the inside. So it weighs of over 2000 pounds, I think it is, but it gives the truck a nice ride. So we're kind of pleased with that. We built that a long time ago when the earth was green and the uh, Swedish kid wasn't even born yet. Okay, this is Thor the plow truck back in 2020. Yes, when we towed the Screaming Ford off towing the V8 Mac. Yes. So here it is, Thor the plow truck, but he's now Thor the dump truck. We haven't plowed snow in almost two years now because it's pointless. Nobody pays us. So why are we plowing snow? So he's Thor the dump truck. So we're using him around the kingdom here to get things done. It's United States spec military Air Force plow truck to keep the runways clean during the great Cold War. Yes, the Cold War. So this thing was known for keeping the runways open now it's at the end of the world driving around having fun also too the fellow who painted this truck i asked him i says here's some money go out and get some trim clad paint some rollers some brush and lots of vodka the more vodka the better the paint sticks but no he used the air sprayer and some unknown brand paint so it's flaking off just look at that and the colder it gets the more it flakes off unreal but that's the joys you have to use the correct amount of vodka for any welding, any painting. Okay, since I'm known as the king of obsolete, we have lots of cats and cats and Lynn tractors. Back there's the two only working Lynn tractors that go out and earn a wage or hit a tree. Everybody else has them in the parades and don't hit trees. We back up and hit them again because they don't steer. This is the, the D69U known as the Bismarck, and that V plow came from Kansas. No idea why Dorothy and Toto had one in Kansas. I don't think they get much snow. So that was gifted from a fellow in uh, Kansas, so it took a couple of years, well, almost 20 years, but we got it on the cat, that's the main thing. No, it was actually only 15. So over here we have cats and more cats, wings of airplanes, and the white trucks there. Those are the film trucks. These are the trucks, a uh, copy of the trucks I drove in high school back when I had a mullet haircut and listened to my 80s rock and roll. And we have more cats and more cats and everything like that. Over here is the 38 GMC looking good, shiny, smooth, probably the only truck with all the chrome. 
Okay, over there on the boat, Rustoleum is a gifted American flag, and we'll be putting up another flag there shortly as soon as we get some paint to paint the flagpole. If you don't paint the flagpole, then the flag gets rusty. And that's the other D69U that was underwater with the Bismarck for three years. Yes, that's why they known as the Hood and the Bismarck. Yes, they were underwater. And here's a boat dock that kind of showed up in the kingdom. The guy couldn't haul it south for scrap, so it ended up here. Pardon me, I got the burps. I had some peanuts before we started this walk and some beer. All right, so over here we have cats upside down because that's the way you work on the rollers. Yes, that's the D69U known as rollerless because he has no rollers. So we got to flip them upside down to work on him. And we have the D74T just right there. And we'll get another view. Yes, another view of the 38 GMC. Yes, dad bought that in 1977, worked on it hard, drove it, and then he let the motor seize. And in 1997, it became mine, it came to the kingdom. So we worked on it slowly since 1997, but this is the summer, it's almost roadworthy. We need a windshield wiper and a few other things, and we can license it and travel the road and big service calls. Yeah, right, nobody's gonna pay us anyway, so why would we do that? Okay, I walked a little bit more over here. Just to recap, rollerless, the D74 T known as Jack. Cause somebody called it Jack, the name Jack on the track pad. So he's known as Jack. It's a military issue. Being a 4T, there's a D69U wide pad that came from the United States of America. Then we have Zoda, the TD9, which has a gas motor in it. And there's Op. Op came from North Dakota. Yes, North Dakota. He's just saying that word. It's cold and windy. All right, there's a 37 Dodge hot rod truck from my wasted youth, which became the Natalie book series. Yes, and there's the rain cr red crane cat that started my great divorce. Yes, I don't know what I was thinking, buying an old cat, you know, from the 1940s, World War II, and using it to load scrap metal. And then a Kingdom follower, YouTube subscriber, suggested we use the cat to hold the tail of the plane up, which was good thinking because the wings are, how would you say, the tail needs support when all that snow lands on top of it. And then over here we have winter freighting cabooses. Yes, they're little cabins on skis. And then over here we have the ramp deck for the 45 Chevy truck. Yes, we've been working on it since April. It's a slow project, but it, uh, we're working on it. That's the main thing. Okay, here's the welding sleigh. Yes, it's a welding truck, a 1946 Chevy truck. It was my welding truck until somebody decided we, the government decided we have to have a road safety wall. Farmer Brown extended the frame in 51. So, well, guess what? It wanted, they wanted an x-ray and everything like that. Well, it's not worth it. So we made a sleigh out of it, a welding sleigh. So we custom made those skis. Everything works out good. And this is where everything stopped because we got some warm spell there. And it never, how would you say, cooled off. So everything came to a stop in the middle of the yard. But that's okay. It's handy having the welding sleigh right here. Okay, in the background you can see the flags there. And there's no wind, so the sand flies are everywhere. I'm eating them as I'm doing this video, but I'm a real trooper, a, a true professional. Just eat them bugs and keep going. There's the 37 Dodge tribute truck in memory of my dad. He started the frame in 1974. And in 84, we got the parts truck for the 37 Dodge hot rod. And then in 19, no, it's 2022, we decided we're going to put that frame cab on a frame and make it useful because it's been in storage ever since and over here we have the Adams grader yes we stole a grader back in 2009 2010 I think it was I'll have to check the court records but we stole a complete operating working grader out on a lake or whatever from a remote lodge but the thing is this thing's junk it was broken it wasn't even worthy of grabbing but we're having fun we'll have it up and running hopefully soon yes just like uh, all the other projects all right so here's the motor and we have shadows. The UD16, we got it running last week, and it sounds good. More improvements to be done on it, but that's the joys of having fun at the end of the world. Okay, it's kind of funny. Back in my wasted youth around Brown and Manitoba, we had an army base or the military base outside of town called Shiloh. Yes. And part of my wasted youth, this truck was my part of my wasted youth. Yes. So it's got the 84C on the side. So that states in the military terminology, Shiloh, Manitoba. So this truck was well known for going back and forth between Brandon and Winnipeg, towing the Canadian army off the road. Yes. They never went anywhere unless they had tow trucks. Yes. Nothing's changed. They're still broken down. Hopefully we don't go to war because we'll have to have every tow truck around. How do you say to get the equipment out to the war? Yes. But that's funny. It showed up here in 2019. So it's history repeating itself. It'll be part of the fourth book of the Naughty Natalie series. So we use it as a yard machine. And it took a licking during Hollywood filming. Yes, they abused it. And it's only appropriate because if Hollywood ever gives me my own personal show. Yes, King of Obsolete. 
then we can use the film footage that never aired back then. Yes, so I'm abusing the truck and here it is today with our fun toy. So over here, this is what we do for firewood. Recycle, repurpose, everything. That was the new shop that we were building. We're going to become rich and famous fixing winter roads. Well, nobody pays us, so why even bother? It's easier to retire. And in the 922 loader. And over here, we got the little cat in the shadows. Yes, the shadows. We got all set up for firewood, but we kind of got sidetracked. But that's usual happens around here. And let's see, if that's Laverne, you can't really see him, but he's a TD6 with a gas motor from the United States of America. And we got lots of birds. And here we got the 45 Chevy truck that Grandpa got hit by the train in 47. And the flags, look at them. So we had this tank shed down at the front gate. Well, we're no longer a business. The gate hasn't been open ever, really. So why have it down there? So we put it up here, and it's uh, so everybody gets to see that I'm the king of obsolete. And that's a Beach 18 we salvaged in 2016, and nobody cares. Yeah, so we put it up there so everybody can care. All right, let's go see what else is left to do. Okay, to end the video here, we'll do a quick walk by with the sleighs. This is where they ran out of snow. We parked them here, and then it melted, so this is it. So we take recycled steel and make the skis. Yes, we're copying the wooden wooden design. So at the sleigh here, we built this one a long, long time ago, and it has a nice deck and everything. So this is what they used to move everything around, and then the ice road truckers took over. So there's an original wooden sleigh, all the oak skis and everything like that. We kind of falls apart, so we just keep welding and welding some more on it, but it works out good. So we try and relive the old days of cat trains, when, uh, how'd you say, they headed out with a cat pulling six sleighs with 10 tons of product on each sleigh. So then we also whipped up a little tool sleigh for the road break. So we put the welder and everything in there, fuel drums at the front, and this is the ACDC sleigh because it's bi-directional. You can back up and the skis don't dig in, so it works out pretty good. Let's see if we can have some United States flag here flying on the boat, Rustolium. Okay, good thing I was sober enough to do the walk around video to get the minutes so everybody gets a full nap. A 20 minute nap, because that's who we like our videos to be at. Yes, everybody can, uh, I would just say, start watching the video and fall asleep, just like watching Al Bundy on TV. All right, let's go walk the dogs, drink some, be some beer, and make a video. We'll talk to you later.